welcome to the White House, everybody, my LGBT teammates. As the U.S. Chief Technology Officer, I, I deeply value the leadership of our president uh, and his team that they show around technology and innovation. But as a gay American with two children, it's our president and vice president's extraordinary and remarkable record that they just keep hitting over and over again for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Americans. I want to honor them at this great time of change. And it's really in the two together. That's why I came here from Silicon Valley. Our president is open to ideas. He takes action for innovation and for the future of all of us, this innovation nation that we are. He also is doing that in a welcoming way for all of us Americans. And it's something I feel every day as he welcomed my family, our family, to this team. This is an extraordinary team, and it's the most diverse team I've ever worked on in my life. There are many accomplishments that our leaders have brought to us, whether it's workplace inclusion, expanding our rights under the law, working to end the violence against us, and critical things like healthcare access and the extraordinary list that goes on and on. You know, I was CEO of Planet Out in the 1990s uh, when we came online and Ellen came out. But it's also the time when Matthew Shepard was brutally murdered. It's President Obama who signed the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act. So it's President Obama's extraordinary leadership and his big heart that makes it such an honor to be here every day. I thank him. And it's my pleasure to welcome to this stage President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden. crowd. I don't want you guys to break anything while you're here now. <laughs> Thank you, Megan, for the wonderful introduction and, more importantly, the great work that you are doing. Uh, we've got some outstanding members of Congress here today, including Leader Nancy Pelosi. Give Nancy a I want to thank all of you, advocates, organizers, friends, families, for being here today. You know, over the years, we've gathered to celebrate Pride Month, and I've told you that I'm so hopeful about what we can accomplish. I've told you that the civil rights of LGBT Americans is... Yeah, hold on a second. I, I, okay, you know what? No, 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 no. Hey, yeah, listen, you're in my house. You don't start, you don't, no, 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 come on. It's, it's, it's not, you know what, it's not, it's not respectful when you get invited to somebody. You're not, you're not, you're not gonna, you're not, you're, you're not gonna get a good response from me by interrupting me like this. They, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. No, no. No, shame on you. You shouldn't be doing this. Can we escort this person out? Come on. You, you, can, you can either stay and, and be quiet, or we'll have to take you out. All right. Can we have this person removed, please? Come on. 
Come on. Come on. No. No. Come on. Come on, guys. I'm just going to wait until we get this done. Okay, where was I? So, as a general rule, I am just fine with a few hecklers. But not when I'm up in the house. You know what I mean? Because, you know, my. My attitude is if, 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 you're, if you're eating the hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. Okay. And drinking the booze. I know that's right. Anyway, where was I? We love you. I love you back. I know that. I know that. So, the civil rights of LGBT Americans, uh, this is an issue uh, whose time has come. And uh, we've got a lot to celebrate uh, because of your hard work. And, and there are people here who have been working these issues for decades. Uh, and so, you know, this is something where uh, it's bearing fruit today, but it has to do with courage that. Uh, was happening in obscurity and incredible difficulty. And you know, I am so honored to be a part of uh, seeing all that hard work pay off. Um, a lot of what we've accomplished over these last six and a half years has been because of you. Uh, because the groundwork that you and so many of you laid before, from sophisticated national campaigns to small, quiet acts of defiance, uh, together, we've been able to do more to protect the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans than at any time in our history. Uh, now, together, we ended Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We, we passed a historic hate crimes bill named in part uh, after Matthew Shepard. We lifted, we lifted the HIV entry ban, and this summer, this summer we're going to be updating our national HIV AIDS strategy, which will focus on eliminating disparities that gay and bisexual men and transgender women face. We, we strengthened the Violence Against Women Act to protect LGBT victims, hospitals, that accept Medicare and Medicaid are now required to uh, treat LGBT patients the same as everybody else. The pillar of the so-called Defense of Marriage Act was struck down by the Supreme Court as unconstitutional. Just yesterday, we announced that insurance companies that cover federal workers will no longer be able to prohibit gender transition services. And of, co and of course, uh, we're now awaiting the Supreme Court's ruling on whether same-sex couples nationwide have the equal right to marry. Uh, you know, there are a few decisions coming down these next few days that I'm <laughs> paying close attention to. But, but how, however the decision comes down uh, on the marriage issue, one thing's undeniable. Uh, there has been this incredible shift in, a, in attitudes across the country. You know, when I became president, same-sex marriage was legal in only two states. Today it's legal in 37 states. And the District of Columbia. A decade ago, politicians ran against LGBT rights. Today, they're running towards them. <laughs> right? 
because they've learned what the rest of the country knows, that marriage equality is about our civil rights and our firm belief that every citizen should be treated equally under the law. Now, we all know there's a lot more that we can and must do. Uh, in 2015, at a time when we have laws that say Americans can't be fired for the color of their skin or their religion or if they have a disability, uh, it is wrong that hardworking Americans still live in fear of being fired simply because of who they are or who they love. That's why I've repeatedly called on Congress to pass the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, which would explicitly prohibit discrimination against LGBT workers. And that's why we've got to keep the pressure on until they do it. Uh, in the meantime, we're doing what we can to protect workers. Last year, my administration prohibited discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity by federal contractors for federal employees. And that's protecting an estimated 1.5 million Americans. Uh, I support efforts to ban conversion therapy for minors. It has no basis in science. Well, every young person, no matter who they are or what they look like or what gender they identify as, deserves to be valued and loved for who they are. You know, in just the past year, uh, America has come far in its acceptance of transgender Americans. Uh, and we've got great folks coming out at the highest levels of business and government and in sports and in Hollywood. We're seeing television shows portray transgender characters and families. And the power of example is slowly but surely changing people's hearts. Uh, but we know that transgender persons still face uh, terrible violence and abuse and poverty here at home and around the world. Well, so, that's the kind of heckling I can always accept. But, you know, too, seriously, too many folks are still targeted. And transgender women of color are particularly vulnerable. So that, that kind of... Uh, that kind of ugliness simply doesn't belong in America. That's not who we are. And, you know, the truth is that courage comes in a lot of forms. Uh, there's courage in the moment of danger, the kind our troops show in battle. There's the courage of resilience and perseverance, uh, what we see in our brave wounded warriors. There's moral courage of the sort we saw in Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. and Harvey Milk, who fight for their ideals. Uh, and then there's the kind of courage it takes to be true to yourself, even if society doesn't always accept or understand you. And nobody's got a monopoly on that kind of courage. It can come from all walks of life. And to a young boy or girl out there struggling with their own identity, uh, the folks in this room, our heroes, have shown extraordinary courage. Not only are you helping others find the strength to be true to who they are, uh, you're helping America be true to who we are as a nation. And that's uh, ultimately what this Pride Month is all about. It's about commemorating uh, the bravery at Stonewall, uh, when in the face of hatred and violence, a group of Americans decided to, decided to stand up for their rights to be who they are. It's about celebrating the extraordinary progress we've made uh, in making sure that LGBT Americans can enjoy their rights to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. But it's also about pride in who we are as a nation. We are big and vast and diverse. We've got different backgrounds and different beliefs. We've got different experiences and stories, but we are bound by our shared ideal that no matter who you are or what you look like, where you come from, who you love, uh, there's a place where you should be able to write your own ticket and be who you are and revel in your true self. Uh, we're people who believe enough in America's promise to make it real for everybody. And those of us who know freedom and opportunity thanks to the toil and blood of those who came before us, we have an extra responsibility to extend freedom and opportunity to other people who are still marginalized and still facing injustice, working families who aren't getting paid a living wage, women who aren't getting paid equally for their efforts. <laughs> Immigrants who deserve to have a pathway to be able to, to get right with the law. 
anybody who's treated differently because of the color of their skin or the nature of their faith. Anybody whose right to vote is threatened. So there are still battles to wage, more hearts and minds to change. As long as there's a single child in America that's afraid they won't be accepted for who they are, we've got more work to do. But if the people in this room and our friends and allies across the country have proven anything, it's that even in the toughest of circumstances against the greatest possible odds uh, in America, change is possible. It's in our hands. Together, I know we'll get there. Look how far we've already come. Thank you. God bless you.